In the dark halls of Theater X, our cameras expose violation after violation of the Clarksville Town Ordinance regulating adult businesses and clear criminal activity. From doors on peat booths to so-called glory holes between them and open sex. We were absolutely shocked at what we found. I mean, this is what we do all the time. Brian uh, Wickens is like president of ROC, which stands for Reclaim Our Culture, Culture Kentuckiana. He spearheaded an investigation into Theater X almost three years ago, sending in a retired FBI agent five times over two years. The investigator then detailed what he found in a series of reports. We feel the right thing to do is to give it to those public officials, those people who can do something about it, enforce the law, uh, that are there to protect all of us. In fact, that's what Rock did almost a year ago, turning the documents over to council member Vicki Appleby, a town attorney, and Clarksville's planning director. And then they waited. Um, but after that meeting in August of 2008, again, we encountered delay, delay, and what started to become very apparent to us is there really wasn't a desire uh, to, to enforce the law, to do the right thing. And with our camera easily catching clear violations inside Theater X, we wonder too. That's how dark it is in there. Town Council mm -hmm. President Greg Isgrig agreed so to sit down out. with us with City Attorney Chris Going Sturgeon at his side. side and watch our undercover video. He's out of the room, more guys in the hall. There's another glory hole in another room. Isgrig was surprised by our findings, saying Clarksville City Police have never witnessed such things. Yeah, we've had a couple times that they've been in and they haven't seen what you're guessing. I cannot believe that we went in the only five or six times that this happened. Well, you tell me police can't find this? No, I mean, we I decided to dig a little further. A trip to the Clark County Courthouse turned up these documents. In 2005, Clarksville Police Chief Dwight Engel filed this election form listing his address as 902 North Clark Boulevard. When we pulled the deed, we discovered that home is owned by Dan Hensley. This document lists Hensley as the CEO of Theater X. Hi, good morning. Is Dwight Engel here? No, he's not. Is Dan Hensley? No. Neither man was at the home when we went knocking, and we've learned Hensley retired from Theater X four years ago. Has he ever lived here? Um, he might have lived here once with my father. But Dan Hensley's daughter told us the two had lived together at one time, but not anymore. Something Engel confirmed to us later on. Is Dwight Engel in? Uh, Carrie Weil from Wave TV. But only over the phone, after ducking our camera for a day. Chief Engel also said in his 24 years with Clarksville PD, 18 as chief, he's been part of two investigations into Theater X. Both cases were lost in court. When I asked about his relationship with Dan Hensley, he told me, quote, personal friends are my personal business. You're trying to make a connection between the two, and I think you're trying to say where there's smoke, there was fire, but we don't know that yet. You've brought it to our attention, and it's something we'll have to check into. City Attorney Chris Sturgeon is fighting Theater X in court right now over one ordinance violation. In October, the store was cited for staying open past 1 a.m. Their lawyers want the case dismissed, saying the ordinance is unconstitutional. After they were cited, that's the sign that went up at Theater X. Is it up there now? No, this was back in October. Just as the sign says, Theater X remains open 24-7. Sturgeon says his hands are tied until a judge has his say. Well, until we know whether or not our ordinance is valid, it'd be kind of fruitless to go forward with further citations or further litigation. As for the criminal activity, like the open sex in the theaters and oral sex between Pete Booths, President Greg Isgrig says he's seen enough to take action. Well, I'd like to uh, start a task force with the prosecutor. I've kicked this around before that we need, uh, you know, to prosecute these people. Have you ever uh, contacted the prosecutor? <laughs> they know about it. Have you ever contacted the Not me the personally. Prosecutor? I'm not an attorney. We will track this plan to start a task force and let you know what happens. While producing this story and as part of my phone conversation with Chief Dwight Engel, he asked me to contact Judge Dan Donahue. He was the Clark County prosecutor back in the 70s and took a case against Theater X to court. Chief Engel told me the judge could vouch for his police work. What Judge Donahue told me today in regards to the chief and the town council's efforts even surprised me. I think it's a lot of BS. 
I mean, I really think they've misled Brock, and I really think they've misled the people of this community. It's a horrible situation out there, and they have the tools to do it. And they could do it on a daily basis. They could invoke that ordinance on a daily basis. And to take a position that we're going to wait and see what's going to happen to this first time around, I think is just, just feeding them a bunch of crock. As a lawyer, when you look at this, you think this could move forward ordinance-wise each and every day then? A absolutely. From my opinion, it could do that. They could continue to do that and rack up those particular fines until it gets to a point where it's going to be too costly to keep that operation going. Dwight Engel suggested I contact you about his involvement in your prosecution, the investigation that led up to the prosecution. What do you remember about Dwight Engel? Absolutely nothing. I mean, I don't remember Dwight assisting me in any way. Tomorrow night, the third and final part of our investigation. We'll look at how Clarksville's Theater X is costing the city of Jeffersonville and the personal costs paid by one former customer. Carrie Weil, Wave 3 News.